The team have located a female eye eye and her son. They want to attach radio collars to track their movements and better understand how far they range through these forests. But first, they must sedate them with a dart. That's what I do, is wait for it to come down low enough to get that clean shot. I mean, how you get a clean shot in this, I have no idea. After two hours of traipsing through the treacherous forest, the eye eyes remain at large. Here is the eye eye that was tranquilized last night. They finally got her about half an hour after we left. I think it was probably because we were disturbing her, apparently. As soon as we'd gone, she came down the tree and she was tranquilized. And as you can see, she's pretty well sedated now, which is fortunate for me because she has certain adaptations that I wouldn't like to be deployed. You can see there her teeth. Her teeth are very unusual for a primate. In fact, unique because they carry on growing. So she's much more like a rodent in that respect. And that's so she can gnaw into wood. You see, eye eyes have filled a unique niche on Madagascar. It's a niche that's filled by woodpeckers in many other areas of the world. What she does is she feeds on grubs and bugs inside trees. And to do that, she has several unique adaptations of which their teeth are one. The most startling is this central finger here. It's bizarre. It's got a ball and socket joint for a start. So it has complete 360 degree movement. It feels to me almost as if it's broken, but it isn't. It's just, you can move it around in any direction. And she uses that finger initially to tap on the trunk of the tree. And then listening to the echo from that tapping with these huge ears she can detect where the grubs are and then she gnaws through the wood with those rodent like teeth and then uses this finger again to reach inside the hole and get the bugs out so the question is why how could an animal be so precisely adapted to a particular lifestyle she's waking up now and the answer is natural selection. See, what must have happened is way back when the ancestors of the lemurs, the lemuriforms, arrived in Madagascar, there must have been a mutation that lengthened the middle finger ever so slightly of one of those lemurs, and that must have given it an advantage. That must have allowed it perhaps to reach into little holes and search for grubs. There's some reason why that lengthened middle finger meant that that gene was more likely to be passed to the next generation and then down to the next generation. So that, that landscape of possibilities is narrowed. It's narrowed because that gene persists. And it's persisted now for at least 40 million years because this species has been on one branch of the tree of life now for over 40 million years. And so, over those years, that middle finger has got more and more specialised. 